Ephesians chapter 6 in your Bibles this morning starting in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. We've been going through the book of Ephesians for some time. We're getting ready for, the, for talking about the armor of God. A couple weeks ago I presented some of that to you. I think there's some words that God gave me I, I want to reiterate this morning that I believe we need to understand. I, I believe as we're walking these journeys of life, it's just we forget that this is a war. It, it's like we think everything's supposed to be okay. That everything's supposed to be good. You know, I, 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 my mind, I don't know how your mind operates, but my mind operates so funny. And I know some of yours does too. Why this happened, I don't know, but I was sitting in Sunday school. Not that I wasn't listening, I was listening. But this popped in my mind. This kind of tells my age too. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a... Along with the sunshine, there's got to be a little rain sometimes. Wow. You know, I began, uh, then he said, now you may remember who sung that. A couple people did, but Glenn Campbell is the one I'm looking at. I could promise you things like big diamond rings, but you don't find roses growing on stalks of clovers, so you better think it over. When it's sweet talking, you could make it come true. I would give you the world right now on a silver platter, but what would it matter? So smile for a while and let's be jolly. Love shouldn't be so melancholy. Come along and share the good time while we can. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. And folks, life is not a rose garden. Life is a battlefield when you become a Christian. It could be a lot of things as you're living for the world, but when you give your life to Christ, this life becomes a war. It's not about fun times. It's not about uh, just living life to its fullest and having all these fun things. It's about a war. It's about a battle. And some words I want you to pay attention to is called, uh, the first one is war. Warrior. Maybe I'd ask you this morning, are you, are you a warrior? Do you feel like a warrior? And you'd go, no, I don't feel like a warrior. Well, we really should. The battle and the preparedness for battle. In life today, it's like we only think of battle when trouble occurs. But if you're a child of God, there should be a battle going on in your life every day. As you fight against Satan and what's happening and how he attacks us in our lives. Be aware of the battle. That's what I say to you this morning. Be aware of the battle. Be aware of the battle in your life because the battle in your life, every single one of us, it's different. We're all fighting different battles. It's all the same war, but we're fighting different battles. We're all located at different places in the battle. But we've all got battles. I wonder what yours is today. My battle is different than your battle. My struggle is different than your struggle. It's still the same war, but the battle's different. Be aware of the battle. Accept it and know what's going on in Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, that's you, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord. Some of your Bibles may say steadfast. Be strong in the Lord, steadfast. What's that mean? What's the word steadfast mean? Non-moving. Be strong in the Lord. Position yourself. Be steadfast, strong, he says. And in the power of his might. Now, you notice how I did this gesture? That kind of shows you that I'm preparing myself to do what? To be ready to battle. I'm taking my position. But listen, that's a dangerous thing because this is not my battle. And if I try to do it in my power, do you know what's going to happen? I'll be defeated. I'll be knocked down. I'll be crushed. I'll be run over. 
But he says, Be strong in the Lord in the power of His might. That's God's might, not Gary's might. That's Almighty God's might, not the preacher's might. That's the Creator of the universe's might, not my might. Be strong, Gary, be steadfast in the Lord in God's might, in God's power. Wow. Because see, when I become in God's power, wow, I can what? I can do all things through who? Christ, which what? Strengthens me. He goes on to say in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. As you're steadfast, not movable, with the might of God, you got to do something now, preacher. You got to put on the armor of God. You can't just stand there by yourself. So you got to put on the whole armor of God. Why? That I may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because the devil's going to do what? Attack me. This is a war. This is a battle. It's not a rose garden. It's not about fun and kicks and excitement. It's about a battle. And I'm a soldier in the Lord's army. We need to grasp that. It may help us because verse 12 says, We wrestle not. The devil wrestles. The devil wrestles. We wrestle not against what? People. We want to think it's all about people, but it's not. You know, those co-workers, our bosses, those supervisors, even our spouses, even our family, even our next door neighbors. You know all those people that give us trouble all the time. But he says, we wrestle not. Wouldn't you just like to get somebody in a choke coat every once in a while? Huh? I know Lori would love to get me in a choke coat every once in a while. If she'd just say so, I'd let her. Amen? I'd let her tackle me. Amen? I did. Honey, just any time, let me know. Yeah, listen, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against people, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. So who's the rulers of the darkness of this world? Whether you've accepted or not, that's Satan, Lucifer, and the demons of hell. And they rule the world. God has allowed that. That's who we're fighting against, spiritual wickedness in high places. Oh, this morning as I break this down in these verses as we're preparing to get that, that, that whole armor on, I want to talk to you this morning, first of all, how to stand strong in spiritual battle. Battles come on all sides. It comes in all shapes, forms. We need to stand firm by God's strength in God's armor in the midst of spiritual warfare. Listen to me this morning, friends. You need to accept when those things are happening in your life, it is spiritual. Spiritual warfare. Satan is wanting to destroy your life. Satan is wanting to destroy who you are. He's wanting to destroy your witness. He's wanting to destroy your testimony. He's wanting to destroy you as an individual. He's wanting to destroy you as a family unit. He's wanting to destroy this church body as who we are and what we represent. It's a battle that we need to stand firm with God's strength and might. There's three imperatives in these verses. Commands, that is. And these three imperatives that we see are be strong or be strengthened. Be strong. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just can't be strong by myself. Amen. But when I receive text messages I, on, on Tuesday... I, I don't know how many I can. I didn't. I, the text messages, the Facebook post, I, I don't remember the numbers. It was in the hundreds. And I want to say thank you because that day I was strengthened by my brothers and sisters in prayer that said, We love you and we're praying for you. And that day I stood steadfast, strong because of the Lord Jesus Christ, His power and might through my brothers brothers and sisters in Christ that were lifting me up in prayer. So man, when I begin to study this text, God said, Gary, that was you this week. You were lifted up and you stood steadfast and I stood strong and I was strengthened so much because so many people were praying for me. 
It was not my power. It was not my ability. But it was God's power and God's ability. And this morning, he says, be strengthened, be strong. And then he says, put on the full armor of God. And then he says, why? So you can stand because the devil's going to throw darts at you. So three commands there. He says in verse 10, be strengthened by the Lord, by his vast strength. How do you get strength from the Lord? I don't know how you get it, but I get it through uh, the Bible, reading God's Word. I read it by opening up God's Word and seeing Scripture that speaks to my heart, like one I quoted with you this morning and just repeated. I, I read the Psalms. I read the story of Jesus. I get strengthened by the Word of God. I get strengthened by going to the Lord in prayer. And, and, and just casting my care upon him saying, Lord, I am nothing but with you I can do all things. And so I, I can get strength by, by the word of God, by prayer. I get strength by songs. What can wash? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen? Wow. Songs. Man, I was listening to one this week. I passed it on to, to, to uh, Jonathan. I passed it on to a couple other folks. I was listening uh, to a song, uh, uh, Old Church Choir. And I, I bet I've listened to it on YouTube this week about 25 times. And it just began to speak to me how God used, and, and He used that song and He used the words to do what? To strengthen me in my journey, in my battle. Put on the full armor of God, Gary. Why? Because Satan, in his tactics, in his schemes, in his wiles, King James uses, He's going to attack you. So we're to stand in God's strength with God's armor in the midst of spiritual warfare. You say, preacher, I don't have any spiritual warfare. If you don't have any spiritual warfare going on in your life or you haven't had, you're lost and going to hell. I'll tell you that real plain and strength with confidence. If you're not battling Satan, it's because you're not doing anything for the Lord. Because when you stand for the Lord, Satan will attack you. When you stand for Jesus, he will come at you. He will try to defeat you. And friend, if you've never had that happen, you, something's wrong in your walk with Jesus. All this morning, stand in God's strength with God's armor in this spiritual battle that we're in. Notice the word stand in verse 11. Wow. He's taking that position. In verse 13, some of you may say withstand or take your stand in verse 13. In verse 14, stand therefore. Now none of these words have the look of going this way, right? Going backwards. But I'll have us taking a position, a defensive element. A defensive element when we stand. You know, we do that with people, don't we? Don't we take defensive elements with people? Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. If you've had any dealings with anybody at all, you've had a defensive element with people. I'm going to have to face that person, and I'm not going to back down. I'm going to just stand there, and when they give it to me, I'm going to give it back. Now, you know what I'm talking about. You have taken that defensive element. You may have done it with your spouse. You, you may do it with a co-worker, with a boss. And you take that defensive element, standing your ground. And as the Bible is talking and Paul is speaking to us, he is telling us to have that defensive element in our life in this battle. You know, have you forgot about all the other 30 sermons I preached about Ephesians, about the problems in your marriage, about the problems with your kids, about children obey your parents, about husbands love your wives, and all this stuff about life that Paul has given us in Ephesians, all to get to the point of it's a battle we're fighting in life today. And we got to stand, therefore. In James chapter 4 and verse 7, as they pull these up on the screen, I won't turn to them. James gave us a great one. He said, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resist him. Wow. Resist the devil's temptation. Stand firm. 
He's going to flee from you, holding your ground, not giving an inch. I'm not going to yield to the temptation the devil puts in my place. Do you know that's a mindset we need to decide right now? That's a mindset you need to decide right now. I'm not going to give in to the devil's temptation in my life because the majority of us, he has a weakness he comes at us in our life. And we should know it's coming. We know what it is. It, it's different for everybody. But I wonder, are you, able, are, are you able to say, I'm going to hold my ground, I'm not going to give an inch, I'm not going to yield to the temptation, I'm not going to listen to your lies, I'm not going to budge, devil, I'm going to stand firm in my battle. Are you willing to say that this morning? Are you willing to come across and, and, and be prepared? Because listen to me, James said it, resist the devil and he'll flee. If you'll say no to him, if you'll turn him off, if you won't lend an ear... He'll leave you alone. Then he'll come back another way. I don't know how many times I've told you and told you and told you and told you that in my personal life, in my sin story of my life. He, he's a come at me in different ways in years past. And as I be could become stronger, uh, he would come at me in other ways now. And that's how he operates with us. How do you prepare for a storm? We have storms here all the time, don't we? You ever prepare for a storm? Some of you's already prepared for a storm. Has anybody put water back in their house somewhere just in case you need water if the water shut off or water goes? Some of you have. Anybody got food put back anywhere in case you ever need it? Anybody have a generator? Why do y'all have generators for? Isn't God good and God takes care of all things and God knows all things? So why buy a generator? Amen. Well, if he's like me, I went without power out here for 14, 15, 16 days. Amen? I got a generator sitting in the garage now. I run it a couple times a year. Yeah, I do. I mean, y'all know who I am and what I am. Uh, any of y'all got a bunch of ammo stacked away in your house, Bob Bantz? Excuse me. <laughs> You can open up about many drawers and chest and garage and building. It don't matter where it's at or where they rush me to. I got something stuck away. I got boxes stuck away here and there. Why? Why, why do we prepare for storms? Uh, everybody knows here close by that if there was to be a tornado warning that is going to affect our ridge up here in Olive Branch Church Road. And I'm not talking about Nortonville and, you know, because when the siren goes off in Hopkins County, it goes off everywhere. But we got to pay attention to the weather to know if it's going to hit us. Amen? Anybody have a weather radio in their house? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. See, we're prepared for things, aren't we? And everybody knows that if there was to be a tornado coming in this direction, in this path, that we open up the doors to the, ch the old church and the basement is open for neighbors to come. We've been doing this ever since I've been here. And neighbors come here to the church and go down in the basement. If you want to know why, just go look into the basement, into the timbers that's down there that were built back in the early 1900s, late 1800s. You'll understand why we go to the basement. It's not going nowhere. It's safe down there. And so we open that up. What are we doing? We're being prepared, right? So we're prepared for so many things of life. How many of you have a set of jumper cables in your car? Anybody got a set of jumper cables in your car? Oh. Anybody carry a jack in your car besides the one that comes with the car? Some of you do. You got big jacks. I'm like, big, massive jacks. I don't want to mess with that little bitty thing. I want a big dog. Yeah. What are we doing? We're prepared. Isn't it amazing that we prepare for everything except what matters the most? Our life in Christ. We'll prepare and get ready for a storm that could kill us. We'll prepare for something in the car that could slow us down. But yet we're not preparing for the battles of life. God help us that... We'll prepare just a little bit more beyond the offensive element. The Bible says in verse 17 of this passage of Scripture that we need to take up the sword. To be prepared for when the devil comes after us, we need to take the sword, God's Word. And by the way, this is some of your battle. What do you mean, Pastor? Some of you do not know enough of the Word of God to fight the devil off when he attacks you. 
Why do you not know enough of the Word of God? You know more statistics about UK basketball or Cardinals baseball or Reds baseball or U of L basketball or other things about gardening or farming or coal mining, but you don't know enough about the Word of God to resist the devil when he comes and tempts you. And what did God say? Resist the devil and use the Word. So we're prepared for things of life, but we're not on the offensive element. We're not taking the sword of God. We need to speak the, the gospel in opposition. I mean, he, he, he tries to encourage us if we could read on in 19 and 20 of this passage. And the utterance may be given that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Friends, we need to know God's word that we can resist the devil when he comes after us. That we're standing and we're ready to take a step forward. Paul also points out the corporate element here, meaning we need others. I need you. I've done use that in my illustration this morning. I need you. You responded to me in a time of my life, in a valley of my life, in a struggle of my life. You, you responded by cards and letters and emails and, and text messages and phone calls and personal visits and said, Pastor, we're praying for you. You know how I made it through what I went through? I went through it with my family, God's family. That lifted me up. We're together a corporate family. And the Bible says, even in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28, only let your conversation be as it cometh the gospel of Christ. Whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Wow. Wow. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. We need each other. And he said, I want to hear of you being together, of you encouraging each other together as you're fighting this battle. We need each other. That's why we ought to come to church. We need brothers and sisters in Christ. And by the way, we need more than just worship. We need Bible time. We need small group time. We need everything in a smaller group than even it is here today. We need fellowship. We need friendship. God said it will help you. See, with God we can stand firm and it doesn't matter. See, it doesn't matter how many soldiers are coming after. It doesn't matter how many demons of hell. Listen, I don't know how you believe and how you follow, but listen, I know there's demons of hell. And them boys are after me, and some of them girls are after me. They're both after me. And they, they, I think they position themselves in different places. I sense them. I feel them. <laughs> Sometimes they're in multiples. The devil comes at us and the Bible said in this passage that you needed to stand against the wiles of the devil. That he is going to throw his darts and his arrows at you. And listen, it doesn't matter how many demons come at us, at us with God, all things is possible. It can go way back. I was reading in the Battle of Theopia, 480 B.C., the Greeks versus the Persians. The Greeks had about 300 people and their soldiers, and they were in this pass. And, and the story goes on that there was thousands and thousands and thousands of Persians and 300 Greeks. Thousands and thousands and thousands of Persians. And do you know what happened? The 300 Greeks helped off the thousands and the thousands and the thousands. Wow. See, that's the way it is with God. When, when Satan comes it up with all the demons of hell, it don't matter how many thousands and thousands there are. When you're standing with the armor of God, you can withstand Satan and his demon army of hell. All oh, friends this morning. I hope you pay attention to how to stand strong in spiritual battle. Now listen to me. I know you're breaking loose. There's this and that happening here and there, but pay attention. Bring your focus back. Sitcoms only last 23 minutes and my sermons last longer. <laughs> Bring it back together. I don't have all commercials every Sunday. Just a commercial every once in a while. Secondly, be aware of the battle. The battle's not yours, it's the Lord's. 
I need the Lord's strength. You need the Lord's strength. We need to be strengthened by the mighty power of the Lord because we do not want to crumble when the evil one tempts us. Listen, if you try to do it in your own ability, you will fail. When you try to do it with your own resources, you will fail. You know, there's a thing in life today, it matters who you know. Well, there's some truth in life that way. Amen? I mean, I, I'll be honest. I have been pulled over in my automobile. They thought I was speeding. <laughs> Cautious with my words. And maybe they would look in my car before I even handed on my license and registration and say, Brother Taylor, you need to slow down. My reply was, anybody want to say? It sure wasn't I wasn't speeding. It was yes, sir. Brother Taylor, are you in a hurry? Yes, sir, but I'm usually always in a hurry. Thank you for being honest, Brother Taylor. We're going to give you a warning today. We know who you are. Sometimes it matters who you know. Amen? I mean, that's a simple little illustration, but it does matter. I mean, going for a job interview, does it not matter sometimes who you know? Connections? Maybe somebody's already been there before you and said, hey, this guy is a tough worker. He's a great guy. Or this lady, she is tops. You will want her as part of your team. I mean, sometimes it matters who you know. But let me tell you something. When it comes to fighting Satan, the one you know the best, the one that matters the most is the Lord Jesus Christ on your side as he fights the battle for you, as he helps you with all of his resources and not your resources. Listen, it doesn't matter if I've been a Christian since I was eight years old. I still need Jesus fighting my battles today in my life. It doesn't matter if my mom and daddy's been Christians their whole life. It it doesn't matter if my grandmother was a godly woman. I need Jesus in my battles. It doesn't matter how much of the Bible my family knows. I need Jesus in my battles. Friends, you can twist it and turn it. You need Jesus in the battle to fight the battle, to fight off Satan. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, 33, and 34. A lot of folks did things by faith back there in Hebrews. We get the faith chapters. And he says, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jedithiah, and David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith, get this church, who through faith, Subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. How did these people do it? Through faith. Not of their own. Oh, David didn't go down into the lion's den and grab a, some, some of that great furnace, gray tape, duct tape, and snap it around the lion's mouth. He didn't take a stick and open it up and shove it in there and, and protect himself. God locked the mouths of the lions because that Daniel was, excuse me, I said David earlier, Daniel was a man of faith. Oh, friends, this morning, if we would stand by faith, what kind, how much faith we need to move mountains? Anybody remind me? Size of a mustard seed. Wow. Oh, friends, look at that. Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, wax violent and fight. Turn the flight of armies into the, of the aliens. All these people did all these things because they were people of faith. We're a people of faith today. So we can resist the devil as we walk in the Lord's strength. Question is, how are you living today? How are you living today? Do you know your enemy? Who's your enemy? No, it's not your wife. No, it's not your husband. No, it's not your mom. No, it's not your dad. No, it's not your boss. No, it's not your co-worker. We need to know our enemy. Your enemy's the devil. Now, if you're not saved, if you're lost, and your enemy could be a whole lot of things, but I'll tell you who your enemy is if you're saved. Your enemy's the devil. 
He started out being Lucifer. He became the devil. But he's known by a lot of names throughout the entire Bible. They tell me in Greek, diablos, meaning slander. He opposes, he accuses. In Hebrew, Satan means adversary. He's the head of the demons, Ephesians 6, 12. He's the serpent in Genesis. He's the ruler of this world. He's the God of this age. He's the evil one. He's the dragon in Revelation. He's wicked. He's powerful. He's cunning. He's wily. He's subtle. He's devious. He's evil. And he dislikes you very much. Especially when you stand for Jesus. He's strategic. I mean, it says right here in this passage, he's strategic. It says, watch out for the wiles of the devil. W-I-L-E-S, King James. What's that mean, Pastor? His schemes. You ever noticed a scheming person? Anybody know a scheming person? Everybody here probably knows a scheming person. Oh, they scheme all the time. Amen? They're tactics. See, that's how the devil is. He's scheming and he has tactics. And he wants to come at us. Look how he talked to Eve. Turn with me hurriedly to Genesis chapter 3. Look with me at Genesis chapter 3. Look what he says over here in Genesis chapter 3. Look in verse 1. Serpent was more subtle. Ah, he was cunning. Yeah. Devious. The serpent was more cunning, devious, subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said ye shall not eat, neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. What Satan say to you when he comes? You're not going to go to hell if you do this or that. Go ahead. Enjoy. Taste of the world. For God doth not know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, did eat, gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. The eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now Charles Stanley said this morning that they had to use several fig leaves because they weren't very big fig leaves. They sinned and they covered their sin. Wow. Satan. A battle. A war. He's wrestling against us. Not against flesh and blood. See, he wants us. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. He wants us. Satan wants us. He wants our life. He wants to control our life. He wants us to make bad decisions. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. Now put your name in there. Wayne, Satan desires to have you. Yes, all through the building. Jesse, Satan desires to have you. Ronnie, Satan desires to have you. Carolyn, Satan desires to have you. Preacher, Satan desires to have you. He does. He wants us. He wrestles against us. Wrestling gets tarsome, amen? I don't know about you, but I get wore out. My son is 6'3 and 330 pounds, and he is a lot of man. And don't record this if it's recording. <laughs> Lord, I got to find everything in my strength and God's strength to break that boy down when me and him wrestles. Sticks, clubs... Take his legs out from under him as fast as I can. Anything I can do because of his power and his might. Do y'all realize how strong the devil is? You're not giving him enough credit. The devil's stronger than you are. And the devil's stronger than I am. But the devil's not stronger than my Jesus. 
And he's not smarter than my Jesus. And that's why I've got to have Jesus. All oh, friends, this morning, Paul said, I feel like I've been beaten up. You ever feel like you got beat up? Yeah, if you walk life any at all, you feel like you get beat up. Listen, Paul was beaten with rods. He was jailed, left for dead, shipwrecked. Physically, it felt like he was beat up. But then Paul reminds us not all of this is about physical. Some of it's about unseen. Some of our battles is about unseen, that cosmic, unseen spiritual battle going on in our lives. Behind the scenes, inside in the spirit world. The devil, and I close hurriedly, listen to me. I want you to remember something this morning as I come to a close. The devil has been defeated. Did you hear me? The devil has been defeated. Do you not know he knows this? When Jesus was buried after the crucifixion, Satan had a party. And the demons of hell rejoiced. And they thought they had it. Then the third day, what happened to Jesus? He arose. Do you not realize that Satan knows what's coming to him one day? And he knows he can't have my soul. If you're saved, he can't have your soul. But he can have my testimony and my witness and my family's. Do you know how tough it is when you know you're already defeated but you got to finish? Anybody ever played a basketball game and you're down 30 points and you know there was no absolute way you were going to win? But you had to do what? Huh? Still play. And walk off that court with your head what? Held high. And shake hands with those people. <laughs> and that coach that wouldn't put in them other players to just make it worse. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Do you not think Satan knows he's lost? And he's mad about it. And so what's he want to do? Destroy any and everybody he can along the way. Because he's defeated. But listen, friends, you don't have to be a part of that. We can have victory this morning. And our victory comes in the battle with Jesus as our Lord and Savior. This morning I asked the question, do you know Christ as your Savior? And if you said yes, then praise Jesus. This morning I want to remind you that victory is in the Lord and Him only. He has already won. He has already had victory over death. And you and I can have victory over death. We can stand against the schemes in our own days in which the battle is particularly intense. And I'm telling you, some days my life, the battle is intense. And you know yours is too. So I'm asking you this morning, what's your battle? Carolyn, don't speak it out loud, but Carolyn, think about your battle right now. David, think of your battle right now. No, I'm not going to reveal their battles. I'm not doing some magic. But I want every single one of us to think of our battle right now. I know my battle. I'm writing it down. My battle and my life with Jesus is right here. I'm going to place it in this Bible. Right here. I wonder what yours is today. I'm accepting and knowing that I have a battle. And I'm fighting a battle and Satan is attacking me. And it's real. And I face it a lot. But this morning, I'm going to ask you on every front row are pieces of paper and pens and pencils. And I'm going to ask you to bring your battle to the Lord this morning and acknowledge your battle. Don't sign your name to it. If you do, it's only because you wanted me to see it. And I want you to place your battle here in this Bible. Because I tell you what I'm going to do. Every day this week, I'm going to pray through every one of these battles. I'm going to pray over them. 
We need to know that we're in a war and we're fighting a battle. And it's real. What's yours today? Would you bring it to Jesus and acknowledge it today? Would you bring it to the altar today or come sit on the front row today and say, Lord, here's my battle. I'm going to bring it here today. I'm going to lay it here. It's my health. It's my family. It's money. It's my job. It's depression. It's loneliness. It's alcohol. It's drugs. It's pornography. It's Bible reading. It's prayer. It's witnessing. Well, we've got all kinds of battles in our lives. I'm going to run to God's Word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to experience God's grace to empower to stand in my battle. Friends, this morning, would you do that as our musicians come and pick, eight, pick out this invitational song? Would you bring your battles to the Lord today? Would you do that? Even before they start singing, would you just respond to God's call right now? Bring your battles to the Lord. Right now, as we prepare to sing, bring your battles to the Lord. Would you do that? Please stand as we sing number 321.